Hello and welcome to this Digital Camera Magazine video tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to create a 20s Hollywood press shot. So basically here we've got quite a nice portrait of a woman and what we're going to do is apply a series of techniques so that we can convert it to black and white and then using lighting effects really draw attention and get that Hollywood look. So by the end of the process we'll end up with something along these lines. So here we can see we sort of smoothed out the skin a little bit, we've changed the tone of the background from light to dark and we've also just used dodge and burn just to bring out a few of the facial details and highlights within the picture. Okay so to start off we'll just go back to the original and always we're going to just duplicate our background layer. So left click on the background, drag it up to the new layer icon in the layers palette and drop and we get our background copy layer. Now the first thing that we want to do is just to cut the woman out from the background that way we can start to adjust the background without affecting the woman herself. So to do this we're going to use the polygonal lasso tool. So just click on the lasso tool icon in your tool palette and the last option down is the polygonal lasso tool. With that selected just make your first point just off the canvas and then as you drag your mouse around you'll see a line appear and what we want to do now is just to zoom right in on the picture so we get a really good cutout of the woman. So go Control Plus or Apple Plus just to zoom right in and I've gone up to, or it's at 50% here, just hold down your space bar, left click and hold just to move the image around. Once we've done that we can make our first point and then very carefully just go around the outline of the woman. And what we're trying to do is try to get as smooth a line around her as possible and after we've done this we can use refine edge just to smooth off and feather the edge so we've got a nice transition between the foreground and the background. Okay as we're just finishing off here I'll put one point in just on the chair behind her and now if I just zoom out so that I can see the background canvas and now I just want to very quickly click around and just finish it off by dragging these to the start point. As soon as I do that you'll see a small circle appear just on the right hand side of the lasso which means you can click to finish the selection. As soon as you've done that you'll see the running ants going all the way around the portrait. Now because we're going to make several adjustments what we need to do is to save that selection. Before we do that we're just going to refine the edge. So if you click refine edge that will bring up the new refine edge dialog window. Right, First of all we're going to use smooth and we're going to smooth it by 5 pixels. That just takes off the edge of any of the selections that we've made. Then we're going to put a feather of 5. That will just smooth the transition between foreground and background. And finally we're just going to contract our selection by 2. So we type in minus 2 and that will just pull our selection back in a little bit. Just below there you've got a custom overlay colour and if we click we can see all of the area outside of our selection and if we zoom in and have a quick look at the edge of our selection we can see there that the selection is just coming in over the hairline and we can see we've got quite a smooth selection all the way around the picture. So once we're happy with that we're just going to click OK and after a few seconds you'll see the running ants again. And now because we need to reselect for the background we're going to save that selection so that we don't have to go around and use the lasso tool again. So if we go up to select and save selection, selection is new, our name for it will be portrait and we just click OK and that saves that selection down. Now we're going to copy and paste our portrait out of the background so if we go control or apple C and apple or control B and that will paste our layer 1. So if I just hide the two background layers and we can now see our background has disappeared and we've got quite a nice cutout of our portrait here. 
OK, I'll switch uh, the visibility of our background copy back on. Click back on the background copy. And now if I go up to Select and Load Selection, we we'll see our selection source is Portrait. And I want to invert the selection. So we're now selecting the background rather than the portrait. If I click OK, we we'll see that selection appear. And again, I want to go Control-C and Control-V and that pastes the background into a new layer. With our image now separated, I'm just going to name those two layers. To do that, just double click on the layer, call the top one portrait, and the second layer we're going to call background. And that way we can just keep tabs on exactly what each of the layers are. Right, the next uh, step is to just take out all of the colour from the image. So if I click back onto the top layer, which is Portrait, select our adjustment layers, and I'm going to choose Hue and Saturation. And just take my saturation down to minus 100, and that'll just desaturate the whole image. Once done, just click OK, and that'll apply to the whole image. And if I just click the visibility of the adjustment layer, we can see the colour image come back. Now I want to darken up the background, so if I click on the background layer, I then go Control or Apple L, or go up to Enhance, Adjust Lighting and Levels, and that will bring up our Levels dialog window. Now what I want to do is to darken up the image, so I want to set our black point a lot higher than it is at the moment. Adjust the highlights as well just to reduce those down and so that we've got quite a nice dark background so if I type in a value for our shadows at 228 I'm going to keep our midtones at 1 and our highlights at 255 and you can see how that's really darkened up our background layer there once we're happy with that we're just going to click OK and now I just want to smooth out some of the detail in the background, which will also help later on with it blending into the portrait layer. So if I go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur, and I want to put a radius of about 20 pixels on that, which will just help smooth out the background detail. So if I click OK, and we've now got our background prepared. Now we need to do the same for the portrait layer, so click onto the portrait layer and again we want to go to level, so control or apple L and we're going to just increase our shadows to about 82, increase our midtones to 1.2 and we're going to decrease our highlights to 217 and you can see you've got a much more contrasty effect on the portrait now. So we just click OK, that's applied the effect directly onto that layer. And now we just want to smooth out a few of the details on the face. So drag your portrait layer up to the new layer icon, drag and drop. You'll see your portrait copy layer appear. Now go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian. And we're just again going to apply a 20 pixel radius blur to the portrait. So click OK, and we can now see we've basically lost all of the refined detail within the picture. And what we need to do is just to overlay it using layer blending just to bring that detail back through. So first of all, we're going to change our opacity of our blurred layer down to 50. So 50%, and you can start to see the sharpness and detail return. And then we're going to change its blending mode to overlay. And there you can start to really see the difference. If I click the visibility icon now, you can just see how that really adds a little bit of impact. You've blurred out some of the details and it's starting to reflect that Hollywood style. Okay, at the moment we've got a little bit of halloing and you can really see the divide between the portrait and the background layer here. So what we're going to do is just use a bit of cloning just to help in between the hairline and the background. So first of all, before I do that, 
just make sure that I've got my portrait copy layer selected. I'll just hold down shift and click on portrait and then go control or apple E and that will merge the two portrait layers together. Now I'm going to click on the background layer, go over to my clone tool in the tool palette and once that's selected just drag it back over to the background. At the moment I've got quite a small brush and I'm just going to use the square bracket tool just to increase the brush size. Once I've got it to about that size in comparison with the rest of the image, that's a brush size of about 200. Just hold down Alt to select my clone point and now I can just start to paint in around the portrait and you can instantly see how that just smooths out any of the haloing around the shoulder. Again hold down Alt to select a new point for cloning and just go around the neck and again you can just see that haloing disappear just around the neck there. And what we do now is we just continue that around the rest of the image. And after a few moments you've got something that looks an awful lot better. You've just blended in the background with the hairline. Now just for the final adjustment to get that blend working perfectly we can apply another levels adjustment to the background just to match in with the hair. So again go Control or Apple L and what we need to do is just move the midtones, just move it towards the highlights to darken it a little bit and you can really see that starting to blend in nicely with the hairline and once you're happy just click OK and we're almost there so it really is quite easy now the final stage is to dodge and burn so what we're going to do before we do that is just apply a levels to the entire image so click back onto your hue saturation adjustment layer at the top click on adjustment layers click on levels and what we want to do is just make a very subtle adjustment to this so we're going to increase our shadows by 20 to 21 our midtones are going to be 1.36 and our highlights are just coming down just a touch down to 239 and we can instantly see the difference there if I just click the preview button and we can see instantly that's a lot more contrasty and uh, we've really drawn out the impact of the picture so just click OK to apply that last levels now what we want to do is flatten our image down so with levels selected at the top go down to our background copy layer and hold down shift then click and you'll see all of those layers have come into the selection now go up to your layer palette options and we can just click merge layers and that will merge all of the layers that are selected so we're now left with our adjusted portrait and our original background and we can see the difference already now the final stage of getting the Hollywood effect is a little bit of dodge and burn so go over to your dodge and burn tools and first of all we're just going to do a little bit of burning so we're going to select shadows and make sure our exposure is down at f about 5% and this is where the real skill comes into working the image make sure you've got quite a soft brush just increase the brush size and then you can actually start to work in and just work around the edges of the portrait just burning in a few of those details and getting smoother transitions just between the hairline and the background. Here we just want to burn a couple of those highlights as well so we're just using a very subtle uh, burn just to really start to blend in the foreground and background together. Once we're happy with our burning we can go to our dodge tool and we just start to really bring out a few of those highlights. So make sure you've got your range of highlights selected, exposure again take that down to 5, make sure you've got quite a nice large brush and then we're just going to just go over a few of the highlights on the picture, just bring out her lips a little bit and also around the eyes just to lighten those up. 
around the cheeks and you can work at it for quite a time just to draw attention to various parts of the face and the facial detail and there you have your Hollywood style picture now if you're in Photoshop CS great thing to do is just to apply a vignette effect or you can do that in elements um, with a little bit of a workaround and then that will really sort of draw the picture in and centralize on the face so if we look at the final image compared with the original we've got a much more dramatic picture we've used black and white to really enhance we've got that blur overlay which is to soften the features and got that Hollywood look and it's an absolutely fantastic and very easy effect to replicate. With CS3, obviously with the application of vignette, you can push it that little bit further. If we take a look at that on this image, just a very subtle vignette going around. So there is your Hollywood style portrait.